Scanning Secrets Part 2 here on the Fidget Revolution 2.0. Today we're going to get into how to calibrate your Epson V750 or V850 by actually going into the inside of the scanner and modifying it just a little tiny bit to make it a really great scanner. But first, if you have not subscribed to the Fidget Revolution here on YouTube, please subscribe. If you have subscribed, thank you. And if you can afford to support Fidget Revolution on Patreon, any dollar amount is wonderful. It makes all these videos and everything we do here possible. I would really appreciate it, so thank you very much. So let's get into the actual scanning um, and, and the modifications that you're gonna be doing to your scanner. But first, let's take a look at a sample image. So I'm actually showing you right now just how good this scanner can be. The sample image I have opened up here is a picture of my amazing wife, Eve. I, this was for a post a couple of weeks ago. I just made the scan again this morning. And this is from a Pablo Machina 670 using XP2 Super that was a chromogenic bleach bypass where I processed the film in HC110 Dilution G. And if we zoom in on this negative, look at how absolutely gorgeous and sharp and clear everything is. This is one of the sharpest scans that I've ever seen come out of a V750. It is absolutely spot on and it's way better than you get using just the standard unmodified uh, a, a V750. I mean, just way better. Um, and I, so here I am showing you just how great the scanner is going to be for negative material. But what about print material? Let's take a look at it. Here is a, uh, a backing uh, paper to a very Pan 120 that I actually found in a, in a vintage camera that I just finished uh, modifying. Uh, and yes, the film did have images on it. I'll be doing a post on where the hell in the world are these images taken here in a couple of days. But once again, look at how amazing the scan looks. I have lost no sharpness. I have lost no control, no tonality by doing this modification. So once again, it works for negatives, transparencies, and for prints. Um, but it's important to understand that what I'm about to suggest that you do, you need to be comfortable doing it. Um, if you destroy your scanner doing this process, I am not responsible. That is my disclaimer right now. If you do what I'm about to suggest, you're doing it because you're comfortable and you're comfortable handling the screwdriver and you're comfortable doing this. If you are not comfortable doing this, do not do it. Um, this is only for someone who wants that best quality scan and who's willing to tinker a little tiny bit. It's not hard, but it does take a little bit of tinkering. First thing you need to do is you need to get a really clean area. So you need to make sure the area you're working on is totally dust free. The next thing you need to do is unplug your scanner. Your scanner cannot be plugged in. I want no power in your scanner whatsoever. You should never work on an electronic device that has power going to it. So unplug your scanner. Next, you need to remove the lid on your scanner. So you unplug it from the back and you take the lid physically off. So now you're just looking at the bottom portion of your, portion of your scanner that once again is unplugged. Now you'll notice on the top, there are four little circles that look like what I have outlined right now. And there's a little tiny notch at the back edge. If you take a very small screwdriver, you can put it into that back notch and that little uh, cover there pops out. Underneath that cover, there is a Phillips head screw. You will have one screw in each corner of your scanner. Now the reality is the top portion of the scanner, that scanner glass, is replaceable. And this is how you do it. You remove those four screws. It literally pops right off. There's no wires or anything attached, at least not on my V750. Um, there's no wires or anything attached to the top. It pops off and you can replace a new one. I also, from time to time, take this off and I clean the underside of the glass. What you'll find when you've had the scanner for a long time is the underside gets a little hazy. And I think that cuts down on your scan quality. So like once a year or once every two years, and I do a lot of scans, I'll actually disassemble this part of the scanner once again while it's unplugged and I'll clean that portion of the glass. So once you have all four of these screws exposed, you're going to loosen all of the screws to uh, just about to come out. It's okay if they come out, but you want to loosen them a fair amount. Then what you're going to do is you're going to make some little shims. I had a little bit of like plastic sitting around that I used for uh, uh, making cutouts for uh, mass for the scanner. Um, anything will work. You're looking for something about, you know, a millimeter maybe in thickness, half a millimeter would be even better. And you want to cut yourself maybe 20 or 30 of these. They only have to be maybe an inch, inch and a half long. Um, and what you're going to do is you're going to stack those and you're going to actually start to raise 
the entire bed of the scanner all the way around. What you can see in this picture here is I have 10 of these stacked on top of each other on the front and back. And see that gap that we've created? That gap is moving the entire platen, the entire glass top of the scanner to its optimum sharpness. So I just sit here and I would, you know, I, I do one on all four sides. I put the screws back in, power the scanner back up and do a scan and I'd see how it looks. And then if I thought it needed a little more, I'd un turn the scanner off, unplug it, and I would add another shim. And you're gonna keep shimming the sides of the scanner until you get to that point where your negative is perfectly in focus. In my case, it was right around five millimeters, just a hair over five millimeters of thickness. How do I know this? I use a micrometer. Um, you need a micrometer if you want to do this well. This is just a general, literally says general on it, micrometer that I bought at Home Depot, I think for like 20 bucks. It's nothing fancy, but it allows you to be really precise. So be sure to get a micrometer. So once I had measured and I knew that those little wedges, that five millimeters was the perfect measurement all the way around, I went and I found a thicker material. I actually used the base of an old ADOX 4x5 uh, uh, film box. It's real thick, heavy, dense cardboard. And I cut it into strips that are exactly five millimeters wide. Um, you want something that's about an eighth of an inch or more thick. You don't want to be uh, too thick because if you look back at the image that has the stack sort of sticking out, you don't really want it sticking out like that because that's going to fall. But you want something that'll fit in there on that lip edge. If you look at the bottom shell of the scanner, you can see there's a little lip edge there. You're trying to stand something on that edge and have it go to the top edge. So it sort of supports between those two gaps. So I found this material, it seems to be perfect. And I, after cutting it down, I would run the micrometer all the way down the length to make sure that it stays right within that tolerance. It's very important that you're as anal and as precise as you can be doing this process. Then what I did is you go through and you remove all those little wedges and I replace them with these little pieces of cardboard, whatever material you have, going down the sides and the front and back. Once again, the scanner is not plugged in. There is no electricity happening here. Um, and I'm going through and I put three on the sides, two on the front, two on the back. That seems to be perfect. You, you don't need to do the entire length. It's not necessary. Um, you just want to get, I, I put the, on the sides, kind of where the position of the screw is. That way I'm sort of right at that point. So I do three and three. After I've done that, um, I go through, and here's another picture. You can see how it looks on the side. I've done one, two, three. Um, after I've done that, I go through with my micrometer using the other end and I measure the slot all the way down on all four sides and make sure that it's, it's exactly the measurement that I've requested, which is just a hair over uh, five millimeters. Um, after I've done that, let me see, I gotta find my negative here. I go in and I tape all the way around. I wanna make sure that I seal off all of that gap so no dust and anything can get in. I just use simple electrical tape. I only went around one time, but I made sure to do a nice even band all the way around. And now that also helps hold in those little tiny uh, spacers that you just added. In terms of the screws, you wanna tighten the screws, you wanna put them tight again, but you don't wanna go real tight because you can actually start to bend the material. So I just tighten the screw to where there's just a little bit of resistance. That's all you need. Um, and after you've done that, you can see here we've got an image uh, underneath the anti-Newton glass as I outlined on the very first post. Plug the scanner in and go to town. Um, it's a really easy process. Uh, I'd say the hardest part is gonna be measuring how much you need. And as I mentioned in post number one, these scanners fluctuate a little bit. Um, I would say you probably should start right around anywhere at four millimeters maybe is probably a reasonable start. You know, four, five, somewhere in there. It's not gonna be less than that, I can tell you right now. Um, but you wanna work it up. And you'll also find there is a little bit of a depth of field range. So mine was actually razor sharp when I stacked nine of those little tiny cards. Um, and it was really, sh those little, uh, little test wedges that I showed you there in the beginning when I was stacking. I, I did like five, seven, I actually have a picture of that here. So this little calibration chart right here shows you what five looks like, what seven looked like, 
what 9 looked like, and then what 10 looked like. I actually went out to like 12 and 13, and they were good as well. I determined that 9 was where I thought the focus really came into play, and 10 was great, 11 was great, 12 was great, so I decided to go with 10. The reason in 10, when I measured it on the micrometer, was exactly just a whisker over 5 millimeters. So that's how I determined the calibration of what this height should be. Now, what's interesting about Epson software is there's a lot of confusion on the internet as to how to activate the high quality lens in the 750 and the 850. They're, they're, it's a dual lens scanner. There's a lower quality lens and there's a higher quality lens. I'll tell you right now, the lower quality lens is not bad, but the high quality lens is definitely better. The way it gets activated in the software is, um, if I go into Silverfast here, let me just pull it up, that way I've got it here. Hold on, turn my scanner on. Okay, so here we are in uh, Silverfast AI, and all you have to do up at the very top, where the very first little window in the left-hand corner, you get to choose reflective, transparency holder, transparency glass. In order to activate the high-quality lens, you have to choose transparency with holder. That's what activates it. It's not resolution, it's by selecting that option. And there's been a lot of misinformation on the internet. Some people were saying that you actually physically have to have a holder on it, that somehow magnetically or magically the scanner knows that there's a holder. No, that's not it at all. It's just by selecting the fact that you've got a holder, it automatically turns on the high quality setting because I don't use a holder on my scans. I simply use the two pieces of glass. So once again, if you decide that you want to do this process, make sure to take the time to have the area clean no power, you accept full responsibility doing this. If you break your scanner, don't come crying to me, but it's not a hard thing to do. This literally is something that, you know, anybody that can use a screwdriver and is willing to be a little meticulous, you know, and spend an hour or two of time can take your scanner to entirely new levels. Thank you very much for listening. I can't wait to hear your thoughts. Now go shoot some film.